Yesterday, we unboxed the Galaxy S6 Active, and we've spent the last 24 hours with it in preparation for our full review. And while our detailed impressions will have to wait for that review, it didn't even take us a day to draw one important conclusion. This might be the Samsung that finally gets Active right. I'm Michael Fisher with Pocket Now. Let's see why. As we touched on yesterday, this is the third time Samsung's tried its hand at creating a so-called active variant of its Halo Galaxy S smartphone. The first try in 2013 yielded the Galaxy S4 active, which made some sense at the time. The standard S4 was made of soft, glossy plastic that was prone to scratching and very vulnerable to drops, so it made sense to offer a beefed-up version that brought rubber bumpers to the corners and a matte finish to the backside. But while the S4 Active did include water resistance, it didn't back that up with any mil-spec ruggedization for shock or impact attenuation. And it featured a removable battery door with a now infamous locking problem that resulted in a lot of phones getting waterlogged. Last year, Samsung tried improving on the formula with the Galaxy S5 Active, a smartphone that wouldn't go on to win any awards for subtlety in its design. Now, despite the hilarious paint job, there were real improvements. Namely, MIL standard 810G ruggedization alongside the existing ingress protection. But the S5 Active seemed almost superfluous, owing to the fact that the standard Galaxy S5 was water resistant too, and it featured a battery cover that, while not pretty, was also not glossy, so it didn't show scratches as readily. On top of that, the S5 Active's ruggedization turned out to be somewhat overstated. Both the SIM tray and the removable battery door were vulnerable to jarring loose on impacts with hard surfaces, and we ruined a review device when it flooded with water after one such drop. The Galaxy S6 Active in our labs today features an embedded battery and a sealed back cover that's not removable. At first, this seemed like just as big a step backward as it initially did on the standard S6, but there are two important differences that make that not true. First, obviously, is that this should fix the finicky gasket problem of previous Active phones. Think about it, with no battery door to forget to lock or to jar loose on an impact, there's less danger of water or dust intrusion. And second, the battery inside isn't the same mediocre 2550 milliamp hour pack of the standard S6, but a much larger 3500 milliamp hour battery that's already showing itself to be a better performer even at this early stage of our review process. Wireless charging has been brought over from the stock S6 as well, and if you want a faster wired charge, you don't have to deal with the flaps of yesteryear thanks to the new free-flooding USB port, which is probably to thank for the shift from an IP67 rating to IP68. FYI, that's a minor bump to an already excellent water and dust resistance level. And the dense rubberized plastic finish on the S6 Active is a huge contrast to the slippery glass and metal of the non-active version, making it easier this year to decide which one is right for you based on lifestyle. How well it holds up will depend on how much abuse you put it through and what color you get. Our gray model here is more black than anything else, so repeated impacts with asphalt and concrete from distances of up to three feet left it with considerable scuffing. Don't expect this to retain any kind of beauty, well, what beauty it had, if you're a real phone beater. Fortunately, our drop testing thus far seems to suggest it'll keep working well even after a fall down some pretty tall stairs and washing it off afterwards is a cinch. Here's where I remind you though that these are by no means final conclusions because we've only had the phone for a day. And in fact, as this video goes to the server, our SX Active review unit seems to think it's on a dock, even though we don't have a dock for it and don't know that one is available for it. And we also don't know whether that's because of impact damage or water damage. So we're letting it dry out for a few hours and we'll report back on this in the full review. Finally, there's a bit of software refinement that deserves a quick mention. The dedicated active key made its debut last year, but it wasn't capable of waking the phone from standby, making it pretty useless for, well, what it was built for, quick actions. Thankfully, Samsung has done the key right this year, now allowing you to jump right from a locked phone to the outdoorsman-friendly activity zone, or a custom app of your choosing if you long press it. And there's no need to assign it to the camera as we did last year because the double-click home shortcut is alive and well. So what we've got so far is a ruggedized alternative to a very slippery and delicate smartphone, but one which incorporates nearly all of the features of the latter and even improves on a few. 
We'll know whether it's worth buying after devoting the time necessary for a full review, but the Galaxy S6 Active is already making more sense to me than any of Samsung's past Active offerings. Keep letting us know what questions you want answered in that full review, folks. Drop your comments below, and on your way, hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. Till next time, this is Michael Fisher with Pocket Now, Captain Two Phones on Twitter, reminding you that unless your phone is at least as beefy as this one, don't go trying those drop tests at home. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.